Welcome to the Beyond Jiu Jitsu podcast. This is episode number 64, Jiu Jitsu Nutrition Guide for Beginners. What's up, Adam? What's up, Kieran? Let's eat some food. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> beginners, no. beginners of Jiu Jitsu or beginners of nutrition or both? Yes. Beginners at yes. Yes. Yes, yes both. and yes. So beginners, yeah, I, I think this this title's a little bit like word a little bit. Ambiguous, ambigu, ambiguously. Am, ambiguity, ambiguity. Ambiguity. Let's start again. <laughs> <laughs> Across from the table from me is Adam Charles, black belt, owner of Alliance Sydney. I am Kieran Lefebvre. I am a blue belt under Adam Charles. And we are talking about jujitsu nutrition for beginners of nutrition. So you can be a white belt, you can be a black belt. You're still a beginner when it comes to nutrition, unless you have, unless you're not. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, I guess, uh, unless you're. Not a beginner. That makes sense. Yes. Yeah. Well, I think uh, most, I, I guess you could argue most people are beginners because nutrition isn't really mm. taught. I believe nutrition isn't really even taught in med school to doctors. Yeah. Yeah. This is, it's very like a very popular rhetoric amongst people that specialize in nutrition to say like, you know, a GP only has 30 hours of nutrition training in their entire, you know, career. And it's like, you know, it's, which is like, I, depending on where you get your medical degree, some people can specialize in nutrition. You can be a medical doctor of nutrition. So it depends on the individual, but yeah, GPs don't get a lot of nutrition training and it's pretty evident depending on your GP of the advice that they'll give you. It's very, very general. Yeah. That's why they call it a GP. Yeah. The G in GP is general. A good person. Yes. Good it's, person. It's They're a, good people. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, this is getting so far derailed and it's only two minutes in. But in the format for this episode, we're going to try something a little bit different. I do have some key points that I want to hit throughout the the course of this episode in giving some uh, practical advice for nutrition. So we're not going to go into anything like, okay, guys, to ca- calculate your macros, you need to do this, this, and this. We actually do already have an episode on that. And I have a video on YouTube called The Ultimate Jiu-Jitsu Nutrition Guide. Look it up if you want that sort of advice. But if you want some key takeaways, some practical takeaways in a more sort of relaxed, general Q&A style format, then this is the episode for you. Yeah, so, you know, you want to make some changes mm. or to your diet or maybe just have a better understanding about some nutrition points. But yeah, you're not wanting to go on a diet or you're not wanting to uh, do a nutrition plan or, or anything like that. You, you still just want to, you want to make some improvements. Yeah. You just want to make some improvements without feeling like you have to cut out all these things that you enjoy to do and eat. Absolutely. So, uh, I'm just gonna rattle off some of my questions. Rapid fire. So this one is maybe, yeah. So my biggest question is how do you how do you deal with from a nutrition point of view someone who has got a hella sweet tooth? Yeah, yeah. So that that's a common problem. And before I begin, I forgot to mention at the start. Uh, if you want to know my sort of the reason I'm talking about nutrition is I'm an ISSN uh, sports nutrition specialist or an ISSN SNS, if you will. Uh, so look up ISSN if you want to learn more. They have some really good uh, information resources. Uh, so. That, that, that's the only qualification I'm coming in here. This is not medical advice. I need to put that out there. So to deal with a sweet tooth. So it's, it's actually really interesting. I've seen a lot of research. Um, this is a little while ago. I was looking into this as in a few years ago is the more, the more sweets and sugars that you eat, it actually, it, it creates an almost feedback loop in your brain, like a dopamine hit every time you, you consume those refined sugars. So think about it like this and I don't want to go all paleo on you, but our ancestors, when whenever they were to consume that quantity of sugar in one hit, that concentrated sugar, that is a huge amount of calories. And it's usually in the form of something like wild honey. If they get onto, if they get their hands on, I'm talking like you know, ancestors here, they get their hands on honey, they're going to smash the whole thing. They're just going to pig out on it because it's a very rare delicacy that has a huge amount of energy, huge amount of calories. And like their brain has been hardwired through evolution to just attach to that. However, in the modern day times, when 
that huge sugar hit in one load is so readily available, you still have that hardwired dopamine rush of almost like adrenaline when you get all that sugar and that that feel good emotion associated with that food because your body thinks that it's getting all of these calories, which you know is a good thing, particularly if you're starving, right? So that that we we need to understand why our body reacts the way it does to that food. How do you deal with it though? Yeah, is, what's is, the life hack to deal with it? Yeah. So unfortunately it requires you to there are do market, a couple of things. There were marketing geniuses who who like their whole job is making you fall for this shit yeah and even though you know this you still buy it yeah you still eat the whole block of chocolate there's all like there's all food engineer geniuses that are especially like their whole position is to trigger that response that that bodily response to these foods without you even knowing some yeah. foods that don't even aren't even sweet have sugar in them to try and trigger your your brain's uh, reaction to that food. Yeah, it's so, like one of the ones apparently uh, cranberries mm. are like fucking nasty bitter berries. Mm. They're like the reason that people think cranberries are sweet and cranberry juice low sugar so it. much sugar. Yeah. They're apparently like, like inedible. Yeah, on, yeah. Like until they've had sugar added to them. Yeah, hundred percent. And like fruit juice has some of the worse sugar content. It's, yeah, I that's, think that some I think fruit that's juices, become quite a, a, a well-known yeah, factor, yeah. right? That, that, that fruit juices can have as much sugar as Coke. If not more, yeah, yeah. yeah. Anyway, so let, let's get into some practicals. How, how, how the fuck do you deal with this, right? So there's a couple of ways. Ironically, the less you actually eat, like if you just go cold turkey, you're going you're gonna to crave the food less. Like you're literally not even going to think about it. And I can, I can tell you for a fact, when I was on a very clean bodybuilding diet, and th this is not what I'm recommending, but when I was, I did not even crave sugar at all. Like chocolate, candy, ice cream, the stuff that I, I enjoyed because, you know, I'm fucking human. Previously, it just did not appeal to me at all. Like there is zero craving. So in order to get to that state, you need to reduce your consumption of, of these refined sugars. Obviously, in order to stop craving them, you need to reduce your your consumption of them, right? So it's kind of like getting over smoking. And I'm not saying it's as bad as smoking, but you know, in some cases it can be, is in order to, if, if you came to me and said, how do I beat my smoking addiction? Well, you need to wean off smoking and these are some tools to use in how to wean off smoking. So let me give you some tools. One that's pretty easy and that I do recommend to clients, which helps with hunger hormone as well, like if you're just hungry in general, is you can consume like a shot of apple cider vinegar. Now I'm not going to get into like the woo woo, like um, sort of benefits that a lot of, you know, some health people out there tout about apple cider vinegar, because it's not all what it's made out to be in, in, in a lot of sense. Um, however, if, if you're really having a problem with it and you need some drastic action, if you put a shot of apple cider vinegar, dilute it in water. So it doesn't like burn on the way down and you skull that, your craving will go away. So, so when you say a shot, like, like how the, much? Like you would put a shot in a whole glass of water? Yeah, I would. Right. Yeah, or if you really want so, to, you can shot it. But that that will burn. It's vinegar. It's like it it, it will burn on the way down. I'm glad you so said dilute it. Dilute Otherwise it in I water. Just been like shot oh, apple cider. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> dilute it in water and then drink it. And that that helps if you're trying to deal with hunger as well. If you have a, an issue with um, being hungry all the time, particularly if you are on a diet in a calorie deficit, you can use that as a hack. You know, in case of air quote emergency, you need to deal with your your hunger hormones. Like you need to deal with these cravings. Just take the apple cider vinegar, and it helps a lot because you're not gonna feel like eating at all. Is it uncomfortable? Yeah, but fucking get over it. Like if you, if you, is it, you know, is the hack because you feel so shit afterwards no, that no. you're like, I can't eat. No, it actually, <laughs> it actually does curb your appetite. So it deals with your your hunger hormones as well, and this applies to the sugar craving. The next thing, your stomach lining can't be burning and hungry at the same yeah, time. Yeah, you can't be dying and want to eat. Yeah, <laughs> it's not that bad. Honestly, it's not that bad. Don't be a little pussy. But the next point is. If you're if you're just trying to deal with these hunger hormones and you don't want to be shotting apple cider vinegar or anything or these sugar cravings, I can imagine. Say. I'm just gonna walk around with it like a hip, hip flask, flask of apple cider vinegar. <laughs> <laughs> you deal with this. Yeah. The the next thing is these are these are a couple practical like rapid fire because this is sort of getting longer than I intended. First is simple. Don't have the the suspect foods in your home if that is possible. The no, it's there, a shit. A that's a shit hack. It's, I don't want to hear that. It's hack. really not. And the reason I say that is because self-discipline 
and getting over these these cravings starts at the grocery store. If you don't have it in your home, the odds of you being like, fuck, I really want a Mars bar. I really want whatever your your food of choice. I really want some chocolate. Then you have to realize, oh shit, I got to go get in the car. I got to drive to Coles. I got to go buy it. And then I got to come home and then eat it. Like if you are willing to go through that to, to curb the craving. Then you've earned it. Well, yeah, the, well, that's, that's, the, that's the whole point, right? If you're actually trying to reduce your consumption of these refined sugars and you're willing to, to go through all those steps to do it, well, maybe you're not ready. You know what I mean? Like it's 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 so simple. But if, if it's an option for you, as in, you know, no one else in your household has it, then then go for it. Because yeah. it's very, very powerful. If it's not in your home, chances are you're not going to eat it. So that's a good one. The next one, and this is a lot harder, but it's very, very, very useful mental hack is allow yourself to sit with that craving. So say, for example, you get a craving to have some sugar. Most of the time, most people are going to reward that craving almost instantly within the next like five minutes. What you can do is you can, and this works for hunger as well, is set a timer for 15 minutes and if you still want that snack after the timer goes off, then have it. You know, just delay your gratification. All it is is a simple exercise in delayed gratification. Start the timer, 15 minutes, you still want that sugar, whatever it is, like you still want the chocolate, you still want the ice cream, then just fucking have it. And again, you can try some of the other the other things on the list if, if that's not working for you. But those are super simple. And if you just get through that hump, like they talk about, you know, with, with quitting smoking, you just need to get through like the yeah. two week hump and it gets easier after that. It's the same with refined sugar. If you can get through, not necessarily cold turkey, but drastically reduce your sugar consumption, it's going to get easier and you will get to the point where you don't crave it anymore. It's hard to imagine because you're in the thick of it, but you will get to the point where it just does not phase you. Does using um, artificial sweeteners like stevia, stevia or whatever, mm. does that curb the craving? Like does it have the same dopamine release or no? Well, like- for, so the research goes back and forward on this all the time. So I've seen lots of studies vilifying these types of uh, stevia, um, artificial sweeteners and, and your – you know, this aspartamine and, and all these all these artificial sweeteners. It always goes back and forth. There's even like, you know, clickbait headlines that say, oh, artificial sweeteners actually make you more fat than sugar. And it's it's complete bullshit. It's been debunked several times over, but, you, you know, it still is a resurfacing. So cut a long story short, if you want to use stevia and the reason that you want to get rid of your sugar cravings is because of the additional calories associated with it, go for it. Use your stevia if it's it's a tool at your disposal to utilize. So say, for example, you really like sugar in your coffee, right? You And you drink like three a day. Well, a typical teaspoon of sugar is about five, or, or, or in your coffee is about five grams of of, uh, of sugar, right? Of just pure sugar. So, you know, there's four, about four calories. So that's about 20, 20 plus calories in that, in that one teaspoon of sugar. You have, you know, three of those a day, that's 60 additional calories. You build it up over a week, you know, it can be substantial. Um, yeah, you said we weren't counting calories in this episode. Well, no, but you need to understand the the concept, right? But if you want to replace that with stevia, so the packet of stevia has like two calories in it. It's like nothing. Yeah. It's, and I would, if you are going to choose an artificial sweetener, I would stay away from aspartame um, and I would go with stevia. So um, there are other like, you know, artificial sweetener brands out there, but just stick with stevia. Stevia is is natural, and it has the other the other artificial sweeteners. The research on whether or not they're carcinogenic is not conclusive, as in they may be carcinogenic. So I would be a very aware of that when you're having too much artificial sweetener. Just double check which artificial sweetener it is. All right. So next thing I want to ask off from sugary foods, I've got a few a few beginner questions but the next one i have is it is more specific to to training Mm -hmm. right that last question was more just for me and what i took away from that is that if i'm willing to get in the car and go get it i can have it which is all the time because the supermarket is very close to my house so yes it's fine (laughs) so it's a win (laughs) um so the next question i have is let's say i'm a i'm a beginner, maybe I already train or don't train, wanting to start training. What should be, can you give some broad advice, keeping in mind that some people train morning, some people train noon, some people Mm. train night. What should I be looking at at what to eat before I train and what should I eat after I train? 
Mm. That's that's a really good question. So, so keep it again thinking. I'm not someone who wants to follow a nutrition plan, but yeah. I'm someone who's like, you know how sometimes well, not you because you're it's what your your area of expertise, but probably before you were educated in nutrition, I'm sure there's times where you've done a workout and you're like, oh, I shouldn't have eaten that before I started training, yeah, and you, you know, or yeah. whatever. Yeah. Or maybe you wake up the next day and you're not recovered because maybe you didn't eat something properly after mm-hmm. training. So what are some general tips for yep. for pre-training food and post-training food? So I'm going to preface this with it depends. Yeah. Everything always depends. And, you, you know, whenever you're being asked a question or trying to answer a question like that, mm-hmm. you can't give one response that's going to fit everyone. But I'm going to try. So let's assume – let's ignore the morning for, for now, but you can apply the same advice and say you're training of an evening, right? So you've had a – like – you've already broken your fast. You've already, you, you know, you've already been eating for the day and you're coming up to a 5.30 or 6.30 evening jujitsu class. What do you, what do you eat? Okay. So I would say at least one hour prior to exercise, I would consume something like a protein shake and banana. The reason I say that is because a banana or any other piece of fruit, like an apple, a medium sized orange, whatever it is, what, you know, Pick your poison here. Pick your preference, I should rather say, not poison. Pick your preference here. The reason I say that is because a banana on average is around 20 to 30 grams of carbs for a banana. And your protein shake is about, depending on the, the brand or whatever, about 20 to 30 grams of protein per uh, that, that shake, right? And Are they simple, simple carbs or complex carbs? Simple carbs. Very, meaning, very simple. Meaning you get that yeah. energy release. So just quickly, sooner. the difference between a simple carb and a complex carb is the molecular structure of the carbohydrate. And it's quite literal when we say simple carbs. The bonds between the molecules are very simple, as in there, there's only a couple so of – a, a lot of sugars down. are either one, a single sugar, or two sugar molecules effectively joined together. And your body can break those down – much more easily, so it, you, that, that that carbohydrate or that energy becomes more available, becomes available more quickly in your bloodstream because the process of breaking them down is simple. Whereas complex carbs require your body a lot more energy and a lot more time to break down. Therefore, you get what you oh. know. You probably heard that slow drip effect, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. So you eat a potato; it's going to break down a lot slower than something like a piece of fruit, which. You know, simple carb shake and banana. Yes. And the like reason that. I say that is because if you're having a simple form of carbohydrate and a very easily digestible form of protein in the form of whey, oh. it's one of the most easily and readily available, easily digestible proteins that you can consume. Then hand in hand, that carbohydrate and that protein is going to be good to go ready and available for use of energy. Yeah, exactly. (laughs) It's it's going to be readily available for when you actually do end up training and you're going to feel, you're going to feel good because you've been satiated as in you, you're not feeling hungry when you're training. And that's what we want to avoid. We don't want you feeling hungry when you're training because it's just going to distract you and, and detract from your training. And you want to have a little bit of energy ready to go available. Now, if you're training in the morning and you haven't eaten for like 24 hours and you have you know, a banana and a protein shake just before you train is going to give you all the energy you need for a really hard training session? No, you get that energy the night before. And the same really can be said for the evening session. So yeah, obviously there's a lot of caveats. It depends, but that's before. Super simple, protein shake, piece of fruit, done. So what are we looking to eat post-training? Yeah, so post-training, you're looking to eat a a complete meal. So you want protein, carbohydrate, and fats. Now, in terms of a metabolic window, Again, the research goes back and forward on this so many times. If you really want to look into nutrient timing, the ISSN has a really good position stand, which basically is a review of all the the research in in an area. And then they release like a statement of the organizational statement. This is our stance on this topic. They have one on nutrient timing as well. If you delve into that, it gets very complicated. It references so many meta analysis. Episodes blah, 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 for blah, beginners, blah. Kieran. Yeah, not but for I need experts, mate. I need to give you some background of where I'm getting this information from, and then I'm going to give you like I a takeaway. Just right? make it up. I don't care. No. <laughs> right. So <laughs> when you look at is there a, a metabolic window? Yes and no. All you want to do is you don't need to like get your calories in in that like fucking twenty minutes. Otherwise, you get, you go catabolic and you lose all your muscle gains. That is all bullshit. Uh, you have like your window is more like three hours plus. So long as you are eating after you train at some point, take the evening class, for example, so long as you're eating before you go to bed, you're good to go. Now, does that meal need to be fucking huge? Depends on how much you've eaten previously in the day. Yeah. But I would I would recommend having a meal with protein, carbohydrate, and fats. At that point, you want more complex carbs. Um, 
just to keep you full overnight. And it doesn't, you don't need to have simple carbs after you finish training. Like you can, if you want, um, like you could do the banana and protein trick after you train, but look, this is for beginners, right? So just eat a meal that has protein, carbs, and fats. Yeah. Okay, cool. And clean, obviously. And then, okay. So that's good. I think that's really good, simple advice, right? That's, you don't need to know a lot and you can very easily take, take, oh, take that bit of information away. Sweet. Yeah. I have like a bit of fruit and a shake an hour before I train. And then I just yeah, make sure I have, you know, if I lunch or dinner or a proper meal after, yeah, exactly. after that and session. If, if takeaway is a problem for you, like after you do a hard training session, like this, this doesn't affect me personally, but I, I mean, I'm talking to everyone here. If for whatever reason you, you, um, you you've had a long day, you're tired, you've just gotten smashed at jiu-jitsu for an hour and a half and you come home and you're like, fuck, I couldn't be fucked to cook if you don't have any food ready to go and you normally tend to lean toward takeout in that mode, what can be advantageous is having a snack before you get home. So having something in your bag, like some some muesli Not bars. Not all takeout's fucking, bad. Most of it is, yeah. What about- Unless you're like going to a health food shop or, or you're having like, you know, a-, a, a but I mean, like portion a, of sushi or yeah. But again, like if we're just we're talking just to the average person, person who's still they're just wanting to make some changes, but they're not they're not wanting to go on a diet. Like if you get, I don't know, like fucking Thai food, it's not the worst, is it? It's got rice. You depending on what you get, but yeah, a lot know, of oil. Tip, there's a lot of vegetable oils in in food like that. A lot of yeah, heavy but calories. There's, but there's also I don't you recommend got your, it. You got your chicken that's in it. You got your vegetables. You got your yeah. rice. Like it's not that bad. It's better than heroin, but like. Yeah. <laughs> But um, hey, you know, stop talking smack about my heroin. I don't, I don't want to play that. Like that, that's a really like sticky game to get in with people about nutrition. Like, oh yeah, but it's better than McDonald's, or it's better than this, it's better than that. And it's like, yeah, everything's relative. But I mean, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna do a nutrition episode where I'm like, yeah, when you get home from hard training, go get takeout. But I get what you're saying. It's not, you know, don't vilify yourself for having food. Don't vilify yourself if you, if you're vilifying yourself or like hating on yourself for your food selection. You have an unhealthy relationship with food. And that's something you need to work through as well. Yeah. I guess I get the totally point. agree. It's yeah. I mean, if your option was take out Thai food yeah. and nothing. Yeah. It depends on how much you've eaten through that day, yeah. but yeah, I mean, yeah, like, it's, uh, yeah, I mean, it's I mean, so variable. Like, but yeah. Okay. I get what you're saying. And yes, fair enough. But um, you know, I mean, going back to what you said, maybe if you have that heroin, yeah, beforehand yeah you, if you, you have might, heroin you i don't not. think you get hungry yeah <laughs> like you might get jittery but <laughs> but yeah if if that is an issue for you that like if you've identified that as an issue i'm not saying it is i'm saying if you've identified that you know personally that's something you want to work on then if you have a snack good to go ready for us immediately after you train like when you're in the car ride home whatever you smash that just to curb the the that hunger app like that, that that hunger yeah. pang if you will to when you get home and then you can find the the motivation slash energy to then cook a meal if that's what you want to do that can be a good little piece of advice. What, what do you think about uh, about those? There's a lot of readily available now like ready meals mm. and like in the my muscle meals yeah like and, muscle chef yeah, or the, the things like that you know yeah. i don't know what ones there are in in other parts of the world mm. uh you know as someone not there's lots of people especially people who train who are just hobbyists and they've got a family and kids and work a full-time job and whatever mm. there's realistically they probably don't have the time to do meal prep or yeah. a lot of the time not even the you know the reason a lot of people get takeout is a combination of not being bothered or not having time yeah. to cook, especially if you train in the evenings. Like if you think someone, a, a parent who probably does, gets up, gets their kids ready for school, does school drop off, goes, works a full day, then kids goes the to the gym yeah, and then 100%. they got to get home and cook dinner and yeah. put the kids to bed and all, you know, like yeah. I'm sure there's people out there who do it yeah. and man, fucking crazy. You guys are awesome. Yeah. But yeah, even myself, you know, I'm a pretty busy person. I've got a kid, but there's people busier than me, but I still feel like, oh man. And I actually like cooking. Mm. You know, I don't really have the time slash couldn't be bothered to do meal prep and I, you know, to cook every day. Again, I know it would depend on the brand and what's in it, but as a whole, what's your opinion on some of those ready-made meals? You're going to hate this, 
it depends on what meal you get. <laughs> yeah. It has to depend. Of like, course, yeah. you know, because some, yeah. some, some, are, are, fuck, some are fucking garbage and I wouldn't feed them to a dog. Yeah. Other, others are great and a great resource for, for the exact person that you're talking about. Like if you can afford it, cause they are more expensive. Like you are paying the additional money for that service and, and, you know, to have something ready to go. But is it a suitable alternative to meal prepping yourself? Absolutely. But this is the big caveat. You have to look at the quality of what you're getting and you have to look at the ingredients and what's what's in them. And like if, if it's something like a boutique service that they specialize in in meal prepping for you, there's heaps of services like that in, in Australia. I know there's heaps in the States and around the world that specialize in creating these healthy like muscle meals for, for busy like executives and just busy people, you know, P- people with kids or like that want to improve their nutrition. Those are generally great. However, if you just rock up to your local supermarket, grab the cheapest ones off the shelf that are just, you know, ready-made fucking microwavable lasagnas and shit like that. Oh yeah, those are crap. Yeah, most of those, and not to like blame lasagna, like there's, there's plenty of different ones <laughs> yeah. you can get. Hand, like, hands off lasagna, bro. <laughs> Shit's fucking great. Yeah, fucking Garfield. <laughs> um, but yeah, it just, just depends on what you're choosing, right? The, yeah. the cheaper, shittier ones are just full of crap. They're full of sugars. They're full of really high in sodium. That's something you really need to look out for in these ready-to-made meals is the sugar and sodium content is generally very, very high. And that's to improve the shelf life of the of yeah. the meal and and the the palate, like the, the flavor yeah, texture. I mean, I, I think it's- The flavor palate, rather. I, probably a very, it's very blanket broad. slash accurate statement. Mm. With when when it ter- in terms of ready made meals would probably be, you know, you get what you pay for, hundred percent. Right? And like even the- some of the expensive like U foods, we have a brand U foods in Australia. Those are dog shit. Oh, are they? And they're expensive. I've, I've seen that brand. But yeah, I've they're dog shit. They it. used to they they gave it they give it to you um, when you're on duty in the navy on like a patrol boat where there's no chef on board. Um, like on bigger ships, they have a duty watch that is they have, like like, a, they have a chef, chef on duty as well that cooks the meals um, for the for the duty watch. Duty watch is someone that stays on the boat overnight. Um, but on on patrol boats, on the smaller boats, we only have two chefs, so you can't expect them to fucking be on duty, right? Can so, I just, so, to sidetrack the the conversation a little bit? Just out of curiosity. Uh, you know, like in the Navy or the military, there can be or there is a lot of like hazing and, you know, we last episode, you know, you said a, a, an expression of there's ranks within ranks and there can yeah. be a lot of this sort of stuff. Yeah. As a whole, do people treat the chefs well? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I would With think the they would. Eh? Like yeah. if you fucking the if dude you piss off can, a chef, yeah, mate. You, I would imagine, would know, right? Very yeah. similar to in the circle. Bec- Never piss off a chef. Yeah, I Never. would think that they're the people who everyone tr- is, treats very well. <laughs> 100%. Now, in the in the navy, our chefs uh, obviously cook our food at sea, and the food at sea is very very good. Yeah, depending, so, I mean, I think that's again boat, quite a well known fact, yeah, right? That it's very around good. the world that like navy chefs or the food on Depending Navy on the vessels. service, depending on the budget. Like in, I know in the States, the food's not as good because the budget is a lot lower. But on some ships in the States, like on their aircraft carriers, they have McDonald's and Starbucks, yeah, well, you know, they're and they're fucking, civilians. They're, like, I mean, I think I would like to see one of those aircraft carriers in real life because it's just one of the it's things. massive. You can't get your head around how big it is when yeah. you're watching it on a YouTube video. I was on our largest ship in, in our Australian Navy and we had a Nimitz class go past us um, that was coming into Pearl Harbor and- I was on a huge ship and it made our ship look like a little boat. Yeah. And and that's a fucking huge ship, man. Like yeah, it's they're fucking, they're, they're massive. They're absolutely massive. So but what is for, for the, for the Australian listeners, are there any that, any of those ready-made meals that you've looked at? I know there's, t- there's two that you've looked at for me in the past where. I've looked at so many, honestly, all their names sort of blend into one, all of like the, the um, like muscle chef and, and muscle meals and like the, all those b- boutique services that pretty much like deliver the, the meals to your gym. A lot of them deliver mm. to local gyms or even to your house. A lot of those are the pretty similar. So looking into those services are better than, like I said, picking up your ready to make, ready to go meals from your your supermarket. Yeah. I would go with a dedicated service. Well, some of those in. now, like Muscle Chef, you can even buy them in supermarkets you can, now. You because can. They've gotten- I'd just be aware of those as well. The things that you want to look at is the sugar content and the sodium content of the meal, and then you want to look at you know your preferences, the ingredients, all of that shit. I'll just give a shout out to one of our students at the gym if. Anyone in Sydney, if you want to go down this avenue, there's a company called Sydney Food Co. 
It's by one of our, our students, Rami. He, he runs those and um, they're really nice meals. They're, they're who I got you to work with yeah. when I was yeah, they were good. gonna fight for subversion and then yeah. I had my surgeries and COVID and whatever. Yeah. But, um, but yeah, they're, they're quite good as well. Yeah, yeah. That takes a huge amount of work off. Like, cause one of the things that for me that is such a drag with cooking is actually just like the amount of cleanup that's post cooking. Mm. You know, you're like, oh man, you cook this awesome meal and then you look in your kitchen and you go, oh, it's clean, shit. clean as you go, man. Yeah, I know. I do clean as I, but like you can't, you can't, I don't know. You can't finish cooking your meal and be like, oh, there's not a dirty pan there or something. Because well, you it's clean it immediately. Like- it's still sit. It's Man, still I get in this in the argument pan. with my girlfriend all the time. It's not it's, the the podcast is no one wants to listen to this shit. Like, but fuck me, we can talk off air about that. I have very strong, very strong views. But yeah, did you have any other sort of points before I rattle off some? No, let's go on to some of your points. Other okay. than my, this is an episode for Adam not to be such a fat shit. <laughs> <laughs> so here's some general beginner advice. And again, shameless plug: if you want more advanced sort of nutrition advice, check out my YouTube channel. I've got plenty of YouTube videos on on nutrition. I've got a, a full nutrition playlist. Um, so first point, if you're just trying to improve your diet in general, prioritize protein. You don't want to go overboard with protein. You don't want like, I don't recommend like a carnivore diet or just, just eating protein, just steaks, right? But if you are coming off of what we refer to as a SAD diet, <laughs> name, <laughs> the appropriate name is it, it, an acronym for standard American diet. Um, and the, the same applies with, um, you know, Australia standard, standard Western society diet, yeah. you could apply whatever. Uh, if you're coming off of a SAD diet onto a more um, health conscious diet, then the, you would want to be prioritizing protein because a lot of SAD diets um, don't have a lot of protein in them. It's a lot of carbohydrates, um, refined foods, um, and a lot of fats. So you just want to be aware of, generally aware of the macronutrient breakdown of your food. You don't need to count your calories. You don't need to count your macros, but you just need to be conscious that you're getting enough protein. Now, what would that look like? Um, you can always use the the standard like um, plate size, right? So it's like a, your your protein needs to be the size of your palm and like the size of your fist and then, yep. you know, the size of your whole hand for veggies and shit like that. You can always do that. Um, but just being aware of how much protein you're getting will improve your protein content. The reason that it's important is because if you're eating too many calories, if you're in a calorie surplus and you're prioritizing protein, Protein is very satiating. It's the the most satiating macronutrient out of the three. So you feel full, right? You also have something known as thermic effect of food. But not all proteins are made equal, Kim. Exactly. But if you just prioritize <laughs> your protein- Keeping it, it simple for keeping beginners. Keeping it super, super yeah. simple. Protein. Protein. Get, make sure you're getting enough protein. And on the other side of that, you want to be reducing your amount of fat and carbohydrate consumption. Start with carbs, then look at fats because it would probably be easier. Now, all that would look like is reducing the portion of of uh, potato or reducing the portion of pasta or reducing your consumption of bread. Maybe you don't have yeah, bread like every day. If, yeah, or like if you're – maybe you have – scrambled eggs on toast as your breakfast every mm. morning. Have one piece of toast instead of two. Exactly. Right? Like, I mean, it's, exactly. a, yeah. it's a step in the right direction. Exactly. So just start looking at reducing your amount of carbohydrates. I'm not recommending you go low carb. The only reason I'm recommending this is because, again, if you're coming off of a sad diet, a standard American diet, generally speaking, you're probably eating too much carbohydrate as it is. So that's a good place to start. I absolutely love that that's called a sad diet. Yeah, it's awesome. it's, it, the name's appropriate. <laughs> um, the next is to start looking at uh, improving slash uh, changing out and reducing your consumption of fats. An easy way to do this is don't use so much oil when you're cooking, right? So if you're cooking a meal, you don't need to add as much oil in it. If you're cooking chicken, you don't need to put oil in the pan. Just get a non. If you have a shit pan, if you have a shit, (laughs) like either cook it on a lower heat or use a non-stick pan. Like you don't need to put oil every time you cook. That oil that you're using to cook adds so many calories that you're unaware of. Particularly if you're very uh, liberal with your oil use, like coconut oil. So coconut oil is very calorically dense. If you're using uh, coconut oil, uh, the same as how you use like an olive oil or a vegetable oil you're getting the same amount of calories. It's just a different taste, a different right. type of oil. Is it clean up? Yeah, there are arguments to be made that it is, particularly when you're comparing it with vegetable oils, which brings me to another point. I would avoid 
in, in terms of fat, avoid your sunflower oils, avoid your canola oils, replace it with extra virgin olive oil. It's just a healthier alternative. And don't cook your oil on such a high temperature. And that's due to something known as your smoke point. And that's that's a whole nother rabbit hole. Just if you're interested, Google it, um, have a have a look into it or submit a question to the show and I can I can delve into it a little bit deeper. But when it comes to fats, just look at replacing them with some healthier alternatives and be aware of how much saturated fat you're getting. Don't vil- vilify saturated fat, but just be aware. So reduce that if it's a problem. So things like- um, your, Instead of you know, getting a medium chips, get a small. Yeah. Well, that's sort of- <laughs> 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 Yeah. But with saturated fat, you're looking at reducing your like dairy consumption. Um, you know, it, it's in eggs and meats. You don't need to eliminate it. It's not going to give you cancer or anything dumb that you probably read on a clickbait article, but just be aware of how much saturate, saturated fat that you're consuming. It shouldn't be the the bulk of your of your uh, dietary fats. Yeah. So, so that's it. So- in terms of your macronutrients. Um, and then the next point I'd say is just be aware and look at reducing the amount of processed foods you're eating. So processed foods, we're talking about refined carbohydrates. Refined carbs are things like pasta, things like bread, um, certain cereals. Just be aware that they are not necessarily the best thing for you because they're carbohydrates that are loaded with sugars and are very refined. So an easy way to think about it so you don't have to go, you know, fucking – dumpster diving in Google to try and find, you know, all the refined foods is just replace them or think about eating more whole food alternatives. If you're a human in the Western world, you've, you've heard the, the, the phrase whole foods being thrown around, uh, particularly in the last like 20 years or so. Now, what we're talking about there is just like food that grows. So you're looking at vegetables, you're looking at, you know, potatoes and things like that. So look at replacing your refined carbs with healthier whole food alternatives. Instead of having bread as a carb source, have potato. That's a simple, simple, like obviously it's not going to, you're not going to have a fucking sandwich with potato. So you can eat oats? Yeah, oats are fine. Yeah, oats are fine. Yeah, I I like, I I like steel cut oats, rolled oats. Oats are good. Yeah. Yeah, it's definitely a good alternative. Very, uh, it's a complex carbohydrate source. Yeah. Um, and the, the next point I've sort of touched on already is portion control. So, and this goes back to the whole, like prioritize protein, start reducing your, your carbs and fats. I would, I would look at that. And particularly if you are overweight, I'm speaking to the overweight people now, the, the chances are that your portion control is a bit too, too much. You're, you're eating too much at each meal, even, and this is a very, very common thing I see. Some people are like, oh, but I don't eat. I hardly eat through the day and then, you know, just have a, you know, one meal or like one big meal. Well, the chances are in that case that you're probably getting a lot of hidden, hidden calories. So you're getting a lot of calories from liquids. Like if you, if you, you know, you drink a soft drink, maybe that's 300 calories. You drink like uh, three large cappuccinos in a day, that can be 300 to 400 calories as well. So you're probably getting a lot of hidden calories. So notwithstanding that, you, you may want to look at reducing your portion sizes, prioritizing the protein. And you could, you could tie that in with your other tip, which is like <clears throat> if you – if you finish that smaller portion and you're like, I'm still hungry, you could set that 15 minute 100%, timer. 100%. And if after 15 minutes you're still hungry, that's, maybe your portion was too small. That That's a brilliant piece of advice. Look at that, bro. It is. And Am the, I an intermediate now? Hey, you, here's your blue belt. <laughs> <laughs> um, and that concept is known as 80-20. So the 80-20 concept is eat until you feel 80% full and then just wait, right? Just wait. Like let your, let your body adjust to that. And it's actually a legitimate physiological response. So your body, your body's ability to tell you that you're full is delayed, right? Yeah. By about 15 minutes, ironically, as you pointed well, out. Well, there you go. There you go. So if you eat until you feel 80% full and then you wait 15 minutes, chances are you'll feel full. And you're like, fuck, I've eaten enough. You would have done it yourself so many times. You probably can't even count the amount of times you've eaten until you feel full. And then you realize you overate. Yeah, like 15 yeah. minutes later, you're like, oh, fuck, I ate too much. Even yeah. though you ate until you you felt like you were done. Yeah. So you need to eat until you're about 80% done. And then by the time your your stomach has enough time to relay that message to your brain, then it, you know that you're full. Yeah. So eat till you're 80%, 80-20. It's like a, a, I'm pretty sure it was popularized in Japan. So it's like a Japanese thing. Um, yeah. So that, that that's under portion control. Uh, next is, now this one is very general. Look at any any area of your diet that isn't quite there. You can always supplement. I always recommend looking at your nutrition first. Don't use supplements as a band aid, but supplements are always available to you. If you want to check that out, we did an episode recommending supplements, and I have a couple of videos uh, on my YouTube channel specifically about 
uh, supplements for jujitsu. So I'm going to refer you to those, but supplements need to be talked about. So you don't, um, you don't use those as a band aid for your shit diet. Supplements are not yeah. a, a solution to your shit diet. Work on your nutrition first and then look at supplements later. But that that those are the key points that I wanted to hit. Yeah, cool. Um, um, yeah, I would just would from also a, a point of view of someone who's a big, like doesn't really know a lot about nutrition, but, you know, I've cut weight for multiple competitions and things like that. I mean, I always have a few little things that, that help me to, if you get to that position where, you know, you're trying to make healthier changes or you're cutting weight or whatever it is. And it's kind of, I don't want to say cheating, but let's say you get into a position where you're like, man, I'm going to eat something. So it's the lesser of two evils, you know, or it's kind of similar to how we, you know, when we're talking about strength and conditioning and it's like, well, the best workout's the one you do. Yeah. Right. So for example, one thing that I always have like at home is like peanut butter. So, you know, if I'm man, I want chocolate or something super bad. For me, I'll just literally eat a teaspoon of peanut butter and like the fats and the sweetness from that. And I'll be like, you know, it's like super, nom, nom, nom. Like, yeah, in your mouth. So you're like, yeah, like that's good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or, you know, I always will have like sparkling water. That's good. You know, yeah, so yeah. that's just even the, like the mouth feel of yeah. having something that's been um, carbonated. carbonated can kind of, kick at least for me kick that craving of i don't really drink soft drink yeah but you know um or soda but can kick that sort of craving because i'm drinking something bubbly yeah you know so th that helps for me a lot you know i actually really have always since a kid i love raw carrots I'm yeah, like, right. yeah like obviously there's other vegetables that are way healthier than the carrot but you know like eating a carrot is better than eating i don't know yeah like KFC. Oh, yeah. yeah. Or like a, a muesli bar that some people would like claim is healthy because it's got oats and whatever. In yeah, it, but yeah. Yeah. As you know, it's got a whole bunch of other shit in Abiding it. Agents you know, sugars. so, you know, I, I always have some of those sort of things, even like rice cakes, you know, yeah, they're great. you know, I, I put rice cakes with, yeah, again, with peanut butter on them and things like that. Uh, yeah. So those little things help me a lot. I do want to have tell one little sort of story. For anyone who's sitting here and listening, you know, maybe kicking back thinking that like, oh, yeah, this is all easy, you know, for someone like Kieran who doesn't crave these things and blah, blah, blah. And like, you know, man, we went to a wedding like two, two three weeks ago. And for anyone thinking that Kieran doesn't have these cravings for like crap food that other people have, how many mains did you eat at this wedding, Kieran? Four? Three. Three. Three, three mains and they had a semi self-service dumpling bar. Oh, yeah. Punished it. And I think like I went to the dumpling bar once. I went like four times. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Man. I was like the only one eating the dumplings. <laughs> dude ate so much. And when they wheeled the dumpling bar away, you were like, wait, <laughs> come, come back. back. <laughs> Should have gone again. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, I'll punish food. I punish food. Like I went away on a business trip last week and we, with my business partner, cause it was like a camping thing, right? It's for videography. So I run a videography business and we had to get some food for the two of us. Normally, cause my business partner goes on these camping trips by himself for his own personal life. And he, he buys like fuck all food, right? He buys like, you know, one meal a day or whatever. We spent nearly $200 on food for the two of us. And by the end of the trip, we ran out of food. Like we nice. ate just enough. So I went like, I fucking punish food. <laughs> Absolutely. I put away food. Like I'm not eating like a fucking rabbit. I'm punishing food. So yeah, I'm not saying to starve yourselves, but if weight control is an issue for you, you know, maybe calor a calorie deficit is the way to go. Now, I just want to end it with just being very, very clear. If you are on a diet or you are, you know, putting yourself, maybe not a formal one, but a self-imposed sort of like little diet routine. And if you have a craving for takeout or something like that don't punish yourself by like not having or not fulfilling those cravings once in a while because what will happen more often than not is you yo-yo you will slingshot the other direction and i've seen it working with nutrition clients so many times and I've, I've seen it in myself and my friends and you know i've been immersed in this world for many years and i've seen it over and over and over again so do not deny yourself completely from having the food you really enjoy 
Maybe you really, really enjoy pizza. Have the fucking pizza. You know, just don't have it every day. Like yeah. have it once a week. You know, maybe do, like skip your skip your normal evening meal, skip dinner or lunch rather, or something like that. If you know, if if that's something you're comfortable with doing, and enjoy the meal. You don't need to earn your food, and you don't need to punish yourself for having your food. You don't need to have the pizza and go for a 10k run. That is unhealthy. If you're if you're stuck in that sort of mentality and those routines, you have the early warning signs of an eating disorder, and you need to be very aware of that and just self be self reflective. So that that's and that's coming from personal experience. So just be very aware of of you know that happening. But I don't think I'm talking to many people there. Just be aware. So don't punish yourself. Have the food. Just you know, don't don't feel guilty about it. Is all I'm saying. Yeah, that's good advice. I mean, I feel like if you eat, I don't know. Like some people eat super unhealthy. I definitely mm. feel pretty shit if I were to eat pizza every day. Oh yeah. You then go train and you're like, uh, uh. Yeah. yeah. I know some people. But yeah, like, like, like we said, we're just looking at generic beginner mm. advice for probably if you're listening, you already train. But if you're mm. wanting to make some small changes without feeling mm. like you're going on a diet or going on a nutrition plan or I'm not allowed to, you know, go have a beer with my friends, you're not wanting to change your lifestyle at all. Yeah. You're like, you're probably just a hobbyist training, but you want to make some sort of yeah changes to you can literally have your cake and eat it too yes bro you can have your cake and eat <laughs> Quite it too. literally and metaphorically and this is this is how i opened my jujitsu nutrition video is what if i told you there was a way to improve your performance on the mats without having to do extra training or drilling that is the power of nutrition if you hone in your nutrition you will get better at any athletic pursuit that you're undertaking except probably sumo wrestling. That's the opposite way. <laughs> but but <laughs> but even those guys, they have to, yeah, anyway. They um, train to eat, bro. Oh, dude, that's a rabbit hole. That's another rabbit hole. They eat fucking ridiculous amount of food. But, and it's still like, you know, nutrition. It's super, super healthy, right? Oh, yeah. Super healthy. But yeah, I will I will say that nutrition, when done correctly for you, for you as an individual, you can absolutely increase your performance. And I don't know if it's just nutrition or like, you know, being fit in general, but last night we had a very intense uh, competition class, our 630 class. And by the end of it, the last like three rounds, everyone I was rolling with was shagged. Like everyone was so wrecked that they were just giving up position. And if they had good nutrition, they wouldn't have been doing that. They would have been winning. You were, you were still, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so look at him in the eye and be like, I'm going to kill you. <laughs> Kieran's just like permanently hungry. Yeah. Like, <laughs> star, star, star. <laughs> Mike Tyson them and fucking bite off their ear. <laughs> but yeah, those are some very generic points. And we could do a, another episode and we probably will so in many, the future. Yeah, I'm like sure we will. we'll do another episode with the exact same title and it'll be completely different points. Yeah. Like more or less. Uh so there's 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 lots of little things to, to take away. If you have any specific questions on this, on this topic at all, or you have some like follow-up questions Send them in, or you in want audio clarification. Format, right? Yeah. Do we have that? Do we have the capabilities we for audio abso- format I'm questions? I'm really glad you asked that, Adam. We absolutely do. You can submit audio questions to the podcast wow. by the first link in our link tree, which can be found at our Instagram. That's Instagram bio, guys. That's Instagram where it bio, is. It's, it's there. So please submit your audio questions if you want to hear your amazing voice on the Beyond Jiu-Jitsu podcast. Do, do so by submitting a question on our Instagram in our link tree is at beyond jujitsu underscore podcast. Episode number 70 is fast approaching and we're recording it only in a couple of weeks. So get that's ready. where you can submit. Did you say audio questions? I said audio questions. Audio yeah, questions. That's in audio format. Audio. You can do it on your phone. You don't even need audio equipment. Do it on your phone. Audio. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, guys, send in the audio questions. <laughs> Thanks for listening to this episode and until uh, next time. Just tape it. Get some cake.